Besides Earth, we have pretty direct evidence of caves existing on other celestial objects. That evidence is mainly coming from the Moon and Mars, but likely many more objects have them. Caves on the Moon and Mars were found because there are some caves which have a pit entrance that is clearly visible to probes from above. Lava tube caves are likely the most common type of cave on the Moon. They are also present on Earth and Mars. Lava tube caves form due to volcanic activity. They are structures which, at one point in the past, channeled lava. Pits were first discovered on the Moon in 2009. NASA's Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter also reached the Moon in 2009. And although it wasn't the first orbiter mission to find pits, it is one of, if not the most successful mission at discovering new ones. As of now, the probe imaged a total of around 278 pits. Of those, at least several are very likely entrances to lava tube caves. The pits, on average, have a diameter of about 30 meters. Obviously, many are larger than that, but not by a really huge amount. Every single image of a pit on the Moon, shown in this video, was imaged by the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter and all of these pits are very neatly catalogued on the official site for the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter. Even the exact location of every single pit that is known so far is shown on a map. One well-imaged entrance to a lava tube cave is located on Mare Tranquilitatis, one of the large areas where a huge lava field cooled down in the past and left a grey surface. This mare is also on the near side of the Moon, the side that is always facing the Earth. The pit has an inner diameter of about 100 meters, and it is also 100 meters deep. In these images we can see the pit of Mare Tranquilitatis from different angles and lighting. The ones from the side clearly show steep walls, and the shadow reveals a large opening into a room. From this angle, the pit also reveals different layers. Getting a closer look at these could provide us with a better knowledge of the exact history of the Moon. Mare Tranquilitatis also has another pit, the Southwest Mare Tranquilitatis Pit. Or more precisely, it is two pits in the exact same location at different elevations. The larger pit has an inner diameter of about 30 meters while the smaller, deeper pit has an inner diameter of about 15 meters. The total depth is 25 meters. In this image is a lava tube cave entrance about 60 meters in diameter and 40 meters deep. This pit is located in one of the large mares. More precisely, it is in Marius Hills, which has the highest concentration of volcanic features on the moon. It has a lot of volcanic domes that are around 350 meters tall. This is the pit in the Marius Hills region, imaged during three different occasions under different lighting. From this angle, the pit also reveals below its steep side an opening. The shadow gives it away, so there is likely a pretty large room down there. How much space it exactly has is still not known. In this image is a pit in Mare Ingenia, one of the few mares located on the far side of the Moon, the side of the Moon that is always facing away from Earth. This pit has an inner diameter of around 100 meters, and it is 55 meters deep. The floor and the car-sized rocks on the floor of the pit are also revealed in this image due to the angle of the Sun. This pit is located on Lycus Mortis, a large plain. This plain also has volcanic domes, so lava tube caves are to be expected here. Now, this pit does not have steep walls from all sides. From one side, there is a ramp that leads to the bottom of the pit, and possibly also to the entrance of a lava tube cave. 
The inner pit diameter is about 170 meters. And overall, the entire pit is 60 meters deep. This is also the largest pit with a confirmed overhang, meaning that certain large parts of this structure hang like a roof. Out of all 278 pits known so far, only 29 are known to have an overhang. Now, of course, there are larger pits. The largest pit found so far is the Copernicus LB3 pit in the Copernicus crater. Its inner diameter is about 380 meters. There are also quite a few other pits of similar size, but they all lack an overhang, unlike the Lycus Mortis pit. Another pit with a ramp is the Central Mare Fecunditatis pit. It is about 120 meters in diameter, and it is 40 meters deep. There is also another pit as well in Mare Fecunditatis. It is located on the southwestern side, but this one is much smaller, although it has a confirmed overhang. The entire pit with the funnel is around 80 meters in diameter, but the central pit with really steep sides is around 15 meters in diameter. The total depth of this pit is around 50 meters. So, in this image are nearly all of the pits that were covered so far. Each image is about 200 meters wide, so the size of the pits can be easily compared. What is quite obvious is that, out of the ones shown here, the pit in Lycus Mortis is by far the largest. It is also quite obvious that all of these pits are, well, regular pits. But there are also very irregular pits on the moon. For example, Tharp 1A, an irregular pit 120 meters in diameter. There are no steep sides going around in a circular way. There are plenty of other irregular pits too. Copernicus 21 with an inner diameter of about 50 meters. Copernicus 20 with a diameter of 100 meters. Copernicus 18 with a diameter of 140 meters and many more on many other locations. Another interesting thing about the mentioned Copernicus pits is that they are located on the floor of the Copernicus crater, which has a diameter of 90 kilometers. This is a crater that is on the near side of the moon, in the middle between the massive mares. In this crater, an exceptionally high number of pits was found, a cluster of 32 pits. So about 12% of all of the currently known pits on the moon are in this crater. But by far the largest number of pits was discovered in a pole area about 30 kilometers in diameter that is right next to the crater called King. This is the view of that area from Apollo 16. Now in this area a total of 62 pits were discovered. So 22% of all of the pits currently discovered are in this area. The King 1A and King 1B pit are two pits located right next to each other. A bridge 19 meters long and 10 meters wide is separating them from above, but likely they are connected through a tunnel underneath. It is somewhat odd that this is very much a recurring feature of the pits located in the King Pool area. There are many others that also have a very similar structure, where one pit is very close to another and is seemingly connected underneath. Another site that was also found to have plenty of pits is the crater Tycho that is 85 kilometers in diameter. It has 24 pits. It also has plenty of pits with a ramp entrance that are on average about 45 meters in diameter such as Tycho 9, Tycho 12, Tycho 13, Tycho 17A, and 17B. Stavinus is a crater 75 kilometers in diameter, and it also has many pits. 26 pits were found here. But what is somewhat odd is that most of these pits are quite small, often with an inner diameter of about 5 meters. The average pit in the Stavinus crater 
has an inner diameter of 10 meters. This is much smaller when compared to the average pit found in Tycho, which is 27 meters. Copernicus Crater has an average of 63 meters. And in the Kangpool area, the average pit is 50 meters in diameter. The average depth of the small pits found in the Stavinus Crater is 8 meters, so you can jump and land rather softly on the floor of these small pits. That is because the moon's surface gravity is about six times weaker when compared to the surface gravity of the Earth. The King Pool area, Copernicus, Stavinus, and Tycho together in total have 144 pits, meaning that 52% of all of the pits currently known on the moon are just in those four spots. Were this many pits found there because maybe they were observed a lot more compared to other areas of the moon, or maybe so many pits were found in those spots due to a geological process that led to the formation of a massive number of pits in a few relatively small spots. Now the rest, 48% of known pits that aren't in just those four spots are also usually a part of some sort of cluster, but they are usually a part of a much smaller cluster compared to the four largest known pit clusters which were covered. This also indicates that pits do form usually in clusters on the moon, but it isn't definitive evidence for that claim. Pits on the moon were found at pretty much every latitude except at very northern and southern latitudes. There are still, however, some pits which are somewhat there. For example, Schomburger A1 pit. It is very close to the South Pole. More specifically, it is located right between two very close craters. Schomburger, crater 85 kilometers in diameter, and Schomburger A, with a diameter of 30 kilometers. The pit itself is about 10 meters in diameter. A pit close to the North Pole was also found. This one is on the floor of the crater Philalaeus, that has a diameter of 70 kilometers. In all of the images, the sun angle is too low to determine if the pit has some vertical, steep walls, but it is also definitely too deep to be an impact crater. The entirety of the pit is about 35 meters in diameter. In the future, it's quite possible that way more pits are going to be discovered that are near the North and South Pole. However, there are some places directly on the poles which are under a permanent shadow due to the way that the moon is positioned. It was also confirmed that these places also have water ice because of the constant freezing temperatures. But because sunlight never reaches these places, it's obviously very hard to find pits in those regions without seeing them directly. Some of the pits shown, like the one in Mare Tranquillitatis and Marius Hills, are likely entrances to lava tube caves. But we don't really know how the inside of lunar caves looks like, how large they are, and what exactly can be found in them. Because of that, there are some plans by the European Space Agency to explore these caves up close, so we could maybe get real images from the inside of lunar caves. Despite not knowing exactly how lunar caves look like on the inside, we still have some idea of what a lot of the lava tube caves should somewhat look like on the inside. There are structures on the moon which are called rails, particularly sinuous rails are interesting in this regard, as they are quite likely lava tubes with a usually fully collapsed roof. So unlike some of the pits, which are just partially collapsed lava tube roofs, these ones are quite possibly fully collapsed lava tube roofs. Sinuous rails are also characterized by a curved path. Schroeder's Valley is the largest sinuous rail on the moon. It is about 170 kilometers long. Rima Hadley is the only rail visited by humans. It was visited 
during the Apollo 15 mission that happened in 1971. This is the view from the Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter showcasing the entire path taken during the mission. And here is an up close view of the exact landing site. Even the lunar module and the tracks that were left can be seen. The tracks were left by the lunar roving vehicle, an electric rover that was used to efficiently maneuver on the lunar terrain. On this mission is where the on-ground images of Rima Hadley were taken. This rail is on average about 1 kilometer wide and usually around 200 meters deep. In total, it is 80 kilometers long. If caves on the moon are determined to be certainly stable, they could later then be used as human habitats. In many of these lava tubes, the walls are sufficiently thick such that they protect from the radiation coming from the sun. The radiation level on the moon is much higher than on Earth. The moon doesn't have a significant magnetosphere and atmosphere to shield from radiation. Because of that, on the surface of the moon, people could receive 60 microsieverts per hour. That is about 300 times more radiation per hour than on the surface of the Earth. Although even that dose is not deadly on short timescales of just several days, it still can increase the chance of getting cancer if the exposure to that level of radiation is chronic. So lunar caves with their thick walls could provide very good shielding from that surface radiation of the moon. They also have a stable temperature because of the constant darkness. The surface of the moon on the other hand can reach minus 170 degrees Celsius during the night but around 110 degrees Celsius during the day. The drastic temperature difference is there due to a lack of atmosphere. As of now, we can safely expect more pits to be found on the moon through orbiters. And although there are some plans to explore one of those pits that leads to a cave, if it does happen, it's going to be at least several years from now.